Hi, I'm Mark Savage here. Welcome to my channel. Do you need a drink? Sit down and make a cuppa and watch this next video. Oh, paddling in my garden. What's today's video about? The second video is my winter hack. What did I choose? Well, you're going to find out. So yes, it's another Bergman. Identical colour, this is just six months newer. So you bought your winter hack, and yes, I know it's the same as I had before. However, there's such good value, you can't not buy one. So what's next? Service, and I'm going to look at the variator clutch and the rollers. Now they don't come without their problems. Obviously I was contacted by YouTube by another person saying they had one for sale. I paid the same amount of money for it, it's 2010, again, still 400cc. Servicing on these we're gonna do next. It is plug, oil filter, and air filter. And because the separate engine on the variator system, we're gonna still use 1040, but motorbike oil. So when I get back from this 29 degrees, I know it's cloudy today, first thing I'll be doing is the service. Now, a couple of times the rear wheel has locked when I've parked it overnight. So I'm thinking maybe the clutch system on there might be worn, but it's something we're gonna look at. We're gonna change the belt and the rollers. On this big bike, they're 27 grams. But still the basic as the little peds. End of the day, that's what it is. Maxi scooter, moped, whatever you wanna call them. So that's my first job to do when I get back. I have rode it a few times to work already. And as I said, a couple of times I felt like the clutch is slipping. So I may have to get one of them. I have been asked a few times, where do I get my parts from? And it has to be eBay, end of the day. But when you're buying, always check the seller. I don't just mean where they say they're going from Bristol or Basildon. You need to start checking a little bit more for feedbacks. The belt I was gonna buy, Hong Kong. I emailed the person twice, and both times a generic email come back saying that we take five to eight days, blah blah. I don't want it to be five to eight days, I'd like the thing. In two days, like you should buy from a UK seller. The problem with going to Google and searching is it gives you such a broad spectrum search that you don't actually get sometimes what you're actually after, so be very careful when you do that. As for the belt, £25 from Hong Kong may take two weeks, and we're talking £80 from the UK, so I have to weigh that one up. When I take the engine cover off, I'm going to check the belt. Unlike the PEDS, it's a much bigger and heavier density one, so I probably will get a quality one rather than one of the cheapies. At the end of the day, I don't want this going in a few thousand miles. The last one could have been on there with this bike and be 30,000 miles, so it's lasted very, very well. Information of service wasn't clear, so I don't know if that's been done or not. But I do want to change the rollers. For 400, it should be pulling away a lot, lot faster. So I'm gonna down this. It's a bloody hot day. I'm gonna enjoy the rest of my holiday. And uh, as I say, let's get back in the shed where I change this for a nice cup of tea, put by the wife. But as I said, service, checking out the variator because the back wheel doesn't feel right when you stop and leave it next day, it's locked up. It's not the brakes. Talking of brakes, look at this. Right, where is he? Oh, surprise, surprise. Is that a cup of tea? No. <laughs> Plain, shut up. Right, <laughs> what am I doing? Um, the brakes are binding on a little bit. Hasn't gone nowhere in ages. I mean, they're good brakes, but uh, I just need a little bit of Unbinding it will um won't fail the MOT, but they're not going to love it. So, all I'm going to do is just take these out, I'm going to clean them up. Brake cleaner, don't need to in the carburetor. Same people asked me before brake cleaner, brakes, carb, carbs. Okay, and now the wife's moaning at me. No, she slaps back in the head, though. So, she's gonna make a cup of tea while I clean these brakes, <laughs> and uh, I'm just gonna unfree them. But this is my choice, so yes, MOT tomorrow. Clean breaks up. Been in a minute, darling. Yeah, I, I just can't let things go. And you may notice a bit of continuity error there, like before I went holiday, while I'm on holiday, and back home in Blighty. It's a miserable day out there. Rollers, 27 grams. You know, compared to the old speed fights and other little ones of six grams and 100 uh, cc's, like 10 to 12 grams. One little sparky plug, minute oil filter, and this is one of those ones that go inside a little bit, so little filter and here's the air filter so that little lot there little service kit 20 quid you know you can't knock that 
um, checked on the eBay, I said two days delivery, and you wait five. Why did I do that, you know? It clearly said Royal Mail. Both of these said Royal Mail. I've got these Tuesday morning, thank you very much, two days as said, and I've got this five bloody days later. So I was sitting all yesterday waiting for the damn thing to come, it didn't. It really, really angers me. So many eBayers do that. People ask where I get the parts from, and well, there you go. Just much stuck as you are. Sam's wanted a belt, as I'll explain now. So what are the pros and cons of owning a Bergman and why did I buy a Bergman in the first place? I had a few people message me saying, mate, there's so much more you can get for a couple of grand, an ER500 and other piles of crap like that. If I wanted something 30 years old, I would have bought it. I said I was looking for something under £2,000 with the best winter protection money can buy. There's lots of fairing bikes out there with tiny little screens on that I wasn't after. The Bergmans come with big screens. You can whack on heated grips or muffs with them as well. And look at the pros. They're cheap. Cheap to insure, cheap to tax, cheap to run. Miles per gallon, you're looking in the 70s. And that's even pushing it as well. And to service it, which is in this video, we're talking one plug. We're talking a small air filter, small oil filter and a couple of litres of oil. 30 quid to service, not a major thing either. And yes, we've got rollers and so on and a clutch of 50 pounds, but at the end of the day, it's still a bargain. Now, if I did happen to come off of it, we're talking a few scratches on some fairings. It's not an engine case gone, a massive exhaust all scratched up. The parts are so cheap. So there's so many parts that are good. Even the tyres, we're talking 30, 40 pound for tyres, not 100 and odd pounds. And that's getting quality ones as well, which are still very, very cheap. Parts are cheap, maintenance is cheap. Cheap, 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 cheap. That's all I can say about them, really. Now the cons. You do look a dick. I hate to say that to all Maxi scooter riders, but I do feel a bit of a dick on one. And it so happens that when I'm riding it, I see all these big bikes coming the other way, and I want to wave to them, and they're going, dick. But I don't care. Cheap and cheerful, nice day, I'll be out in Ducati, or whatever sports bike you may have. For a second bike, they are just brilliant. Probably doing a video on your own, is that people look at you while you're a dick. But yes, I'm still in Cape Verde. 31 degrees today, been to the gym, eating too much. Have it. Not that many cons really. Looking a bit of a dick. You can't do a million miles an hour. It's winter, you don't want to. They've got great storage, I forgot to mention that. <clears throat> you don't necessarily need a back box, but under the seat, there's enough to get your helmet, waterproofs, whatever you want. I've even seen one with panniers. I think that's going a little bit too far. But you don't need it. It's got enough there. You've got a little glove box. You're not going to put anything in there except maybe your gloves. And it's lockable as well. Not the best fuel tank size, but with 70 miles to gallon plus, what more do you want? So I'm going to start getting the air filter off, drain the oil out. I'll show you bits and bobs as I go along. Um, the main thing we're going to focus on today is the variator system on here. Not done one before, so we'll have a go at it. Now I do know that you have to pull these up. And most of the bolts you need to get these off are under here. The oil filter to change that. It's just there, so it's three 10 mil bolts that will come off there. There's a drain plug, so the oil in this is really simple. Obviously, this is to come out of the way to get this off. That's not so bloody simple. The spark plug is somewhere in there, and the air filter is in there. So we're going to give the air filter and check that out first. The reason why I know it needs a service starts bang on. Um, it does ride okay, not the best acceleration. But it's 400. As I was sitting at traffic lights the other day and the mirrors were shaking, the whole engine was shaking. <laughs> I'm thinking, that's not right, needs a service. Plug, difficult to get hold of, that's why people don't do them. So that's something we're gonna do today. Um, panels are gonna have to come off everywhere and I'll show you how to pop them out. Don't just get a screwdriver and start whacking in, take off bolts, have a nose around, because these sort of bikes all clip in and under. When you take one bolt off, you get find another bolt and so on. So that's the hardest thing to do is actually find out all the little secret bolts are pushed in um, and then get them off. There's little ones here. I think this, this this cover comes off here, I'm pretty sure. And I might better get the plug that much easier. And it's just the variator system. Okay, that didn't go to plan. <laughs> Let's carry on. I stand very much corrected. Um, there's only two little push, little, um, Press pins, you push them in and they come out again, little clips, let me show you. These little things, you just, they're like that, you just push them in and they go like that and then just pull them straight back out again. There was only two of them 
and this just sort of lift forward there's little clips in here and the spark plugs just in there I mean that couldn't actually be easier and there's a spark plug I mean how easy is that I remember I had a K4 I think and the spark plug was right in this corner here really bloody hard to get hold of so I've definitely upgraded that the spark plug or an air filter simple it should be a 30 minute job obviously the variant is going to take a lot longer but um yeah there we go that's just there's the um oil filter oil drain plug and air filter the plug was really simple now the air box only got two screws and you have to sort of lift up and pull out at the same time just under this seat has this little cover on it hasn't got the same little tacks these little screw ones they never come out to get a screwdriver underneath here and leave it they'll pop up and then get them ready the same way they just don't screw out no matter how much you try two phillips screws that's it in here now when you get them up you've got to push up and then push out with the air filter with it okay don't try and separate you won't get it out and then we have a very dirty air filter that is that's really filthy this hasn't been done for a long time and as for the plug, oddly enough, this is an eight. Um, I got a seven. Now, as long as the name numbers are the same, so CR number and an E, which this is, they're just hotter and cooler plugs. They're not going to make a difference. What's scary is if the numbers are different and if it's different size, then do not put it in. If this is shorter or longer, you're just going to damage your bike or it won't run. But having a different number, they're just for cooler areas or hotter areas. Well, this little one for the winter, it's not going to be any difference in the summer either. So I've put the seven in, this is an eight. And I said, uh, that is really, really quite crap. I'm going to blow that out and clean out a little bit of dust that you see come out of there. And if you, uh, if you look, you know, even in the bag, it looks amazing. It's just a hip flow, high flow. I never know what to call them, really. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's a bin job. There we go. Clean plug, clean air filter, some clean oil. This really should run nicely. Just quick food for thought. If you work in a really, really dusty area, you know, a lot, I sold a ped recently, um, and a day later the little lad had a little problem, so I had to look at it. And uh, he'd done 100 kilometers in a day or so, but where he worked was like across a field. And uh, in really hot weather the dust on this thing was unbelievable it's so bad it managed to get into the carb um, if you regularly go through someone that's really dusty your bike will suck in all of that dust and it'll end up here so you know you're gonna have to start really considering to service your bike a lot lot earlier than you would have before because you're just sucking in the crap fuel efficiency is gonna go down it's gonna take longer to start and run not as well so there we go, nice little fit. I'm gonna pop that back in, put that back on, get on with the oil. So I have a simple 17mm and an 8mm to get the filter off. Simple oil change. And here's the uh, filter. Um, a little bit of cause concern. Can't really see it. Let me show it on this one. I use baking tins sometimes because it's easy, but there's actually little bits in the oil. Um, if you can see them or not like little bits there, you can see little black bits um, cause of concern um, they're not metal, just a bit gunky maybe I should have flushed it with some oil flush um, but changing the filter should really help and um, changing it all also um, if it had been little metal flakes that mean there been some engine damage from the ring, piston, anywhere, grinding, valves and so on but with that little bit in there that just means to me that this engine may have been topped up regularly from the previous owner and I certainly didn't have an oil or filter change for a very long time along with the plug and that air filter was filthy so this should be a really happy bike now um, for a quick and easy service I say £20 for the kit and you've got to buy your own oil so 15 there's not a lot in this I'm not looking at the specs but you're probably not talking 2 litres so just over a litre, a litre and a half maybe um, but I'll top back up now. I've got five litres, so I wasn't too worried um, with how much I'm going to use. Dispose of your filters and plugs and oil responsibly. 
you can beat them to a tip nowadays. Don't dump it in your bin. Right, variator next. This is going to be a bit more complicated. So it's the first time, as I said, you ever take one of these little bits off. And once you pull a little rubber strip off and the front one, it's just the simple screws and a few of them pop with it things again. And that just falls down basically out of your way. A little connection at the front's rounded, so I've just put it on the floor. So I took this little air fan thingy off. And here, I did see, there seems to be another little uh, filter for the fan, I reckon. Try and keep your bolts together. There you go. That, I'm just going to blow out. There's nothing really wrong with that. Wash it or blow it out. And here, for the first time have I seen, a very out of system. Now, that has obviously got a grip on it. I'm wondering, can I get an outer socket on there? rather than having to jam it in like I do on the peds. But we're going to have a look. So I'll get this cover off and then get this other cover off. And then we'll have a look at the belt and see what's ticking inside here. Because the back wheel, although it's freely wheeling now, a couple of times has gone really stiff and hard on there. And I don't know why. So I want to check in there. And I said I want to see if I can change the rollers. But it's all a little bit just, you know, as you, as you do it, really. There's the, uh, back to the oil filter i've just filled up the right amount of oil about one and a half liters and i've just rechecked to make sure that the seal nicely there as i always say start the engine or go for a little ride come back check the oil again all right make sure the level is just under the full level too much is just as bad as not enough okay i'm not saying in any way shape or form this is the right way to do it but i've got all the bolts off and it just won't come off at all you can't get a screwdriver and jab it in. So, I put two bolts in here, the claw hammer, the claw, and another hammer, and I tapped it like this, and it has started to break the seal. So, now I'm going to get a small screwdriver, pop it underneath, and gently try and prise it away. It's bloody hard. Um, there's no other way I know of doing it uh, the manual doesn't say anything about it either it's really dusty as well, don't get in your eyes but I reason I tried putting a, a bit of wood or claw in here as well it just wouldn't move for love nor money I know there's a couple of cotter pins in there to keep it there as well but this has most certainly broke the seal so I'm going to carry on tapping this basically like this and I'm going to move to the front and try and get the front bit up and then evenly get it off otherwise you're just leaving it the wrong way so, um, yeah, then we'll have a look in here. There we go. And there's one, but I mean, I wonder they're there for that reason anyway. I don't know, but I just used them two and used the lever hammer. Let's put them out of the way because they're not part of the bike. Now, I did snap one of the bolts. I suppose it's always going to happen. It's snapped there, um, and that's been keeping it on as well. Um, it's not the end of the world. You've still got all the other bolts. And, oh, there we go. Oh, now that's filthy, I'm going to give that a good clean. Wow! That's much, much bigger than a speed fight, I'll tell you. It's bloody massive. No, it's not. I thought that might be a problem. The belt actually looks really good, so I would have wasted money there. And there's the variator system. Wow, look at that. Oh, I'll tell you what though, it does seem to jam. Oh, blimey. Well, oh, that's moving the piston, I guess. But that... This is what I'm finding, it might jam the wheels. There might be something wrong with this lot, I don't know. I'm going to have to have a little investigate. But there we go, let's see if I can get the variator off and then have a little look. But I'm actually quite happy with that belt. It looks like it has been done at some time. There's definitely not a lot of wear on there. Looks pretty good. But <laughs> maybe that cover hasn't been off in a very long time and these are really good quality belts anyway. So, the same technique that I use on the pegs. Big bar, claw hammer, in one of the claws but I had to use this one as well and wedged it along the top so I had that sort of angle pushed my foot there span it round now important there's a mark on here and on here and remember which way this goes okay so it goes on that way it's got a little concave bit to it that is really important they go back on the same way you won't get the tension back on and that's how it's marked so that's how tight to put it you have to look at the specs for this but nicely someone's all done it before so here's this rather large belt and i'll be able to get to my variator system which again is just exactly the same 
as the pets. That's, that sounds mad, doesn't it? It's exactly the same. And here we have it. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Make sure this uh, is clean, not oily, uh, it rubs back and forth nicely. Um, this has got the back ring on this, which they originally have. We'll have a look at what the rollers are like in here, and I can see lots of shit in there. Clean it all out in here. I think this should be a good improvement. Let's have a look what they look like. These are um, quite hard, but remember, use a good screwdriver. Don't, you know, round the nut off. <laughs> You'd be just the bolt even. The screw, I don't know, bolt. These are bolts. Do not round these off. You'd be a world of pain. As I so like to say. So it's the first time I've uh, taken one of these off. And uh, I don't know what I was expecting to be honest with you. Oh, look at this. Cup of tea. Thanks, wife. <laughs> they don't make the same tea on holiday, do they? Use like yak's milk or something. I don't know, UHT milk's fucking disgusting. Anyway, got a cup of tea. I'm happy with that. That goes on the box. Uh, just on a side note. That came up well, didn't it? Just blew that out. That'll go back on. Right, well, what I've been waiting for. Let's have a look at. Uh, Okay, that's not, that's not nice. Then there we go. And this is what it was rolling on. Can you see that? Flat spots, they needed changing. And look at the state of it. Can you see that lot? This was a well worth job doing. And I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna weigh these and see what they are. Uh, the manual said 27 grams, so I've got a new ones at 27 grams, but I'm going to weigh them. Don't tell the wife I'm going to use her scales. But look, can you see that? Look at that. That is... <laughs> God, it's still... Oh, look at that. That is not good. No wonder this little baby was taking a long time. Oh, I'm going to have to blow all that out, clean it all out. Look at that. Wow. Job done there. Right, let's uh, clean all this up. Don't lose these little bits. Yeah, everything's filthy. Clean everything up and get this back on. Uh, I can't see much wrong with the clutch, but this most certainly wouldn't have been wouldn't have been good. Right. Okay, this is absolutely just. I've got grease in there. Maybe this needs grease. I'm gonna read up on that as a bearing. Maybe I'll say. I don't know. That's just shit in there. I wouldn't have said that it'd run away. But anyway, that's just disgusting. Now, here's my problem. There was two rollers you can buy, 27 grams or 21 grams. These are knackered. These, some of these are 18, some of these are 21. So they are knackered. What it will mean is I will pull away very slowly um, with these much heavier rollers. But I'll get amazing top end. Burger. Now, I'm not after beating any from the traffic lights. This is just a winter hack. I will put these in. If it is actually terrible, I'm having to scoot away or something, then I'm going to change them straight away. But if it just means a little bit slower, with the service and the clean, I'm hoping it really does improve it all round anyway. And to be honest with you, you know, this, this will do 80 mile an hour, about 8,500 revs. That's what it was doing before. Um, I didn't want to do much more than that. Uh, I mean, 70. Um, so it gets you there. You know, uh, I think it was really good clean of else. I'm going to double check up with this because I make sure they're always dry. Maybe because this does higher speeds, it does need grease in there. So I'm just going to quickly read up and I will let you know about that because I don't like having anything in there. It should be free to move because at this sort of speed I can see it jamming I don't know let me double check and I'll get straight back to you and let you know whether I'm going to put grease back in there or not because I said I always run them dry never put anything these have got to run dry these systems 
I mean, it's greased there. Surely this is going to slowly go in and out. But there does seem to be a rubber seal here. So maybe that's what's about. That does need grease in there. Ah, it's got two seals either side. So there you go. That's what it must be. Two seals. Double check. Back in a second. And I'm going to keep cleaning, put it all back together, get it back on, remembering to put that washer the right way. Put these heavy, heavy ones back in there. And not these crappy ones. They had, they had had some life there, hadn't they? I mean, look at the, the spots in there. All that dust also was part of the belt, but the belt actually looks really good. Um, it doesn't explain the back wheel locking. Now, in theory, if I put the rear handbrake on here and then I might be able to get that nut off there and then take this and have a look at this because at the end of the day, this also is jamming. There's a bloody big spring in there. And again, there's, there's dust, so I might just blow all the whole thing out. I want to check the... Oh, I can check them here. Oh, they're good. I can actually feel them, the little sort of pads on here. They're quite good in here. But again, let's give it a good clean. So there we have these rolling very nicely. And do test them, make sure they do roll, okay? Because if it's still jamming, that's not right. And then that's all nice and clean now. That goes on like that. So you get this bit. Grease does go in there, high density grease. Now I've used copper grease. It's good enough for brake discs, it's good enough for this. Now this is funny, old habits die hard. This on the speed fights and other bikes, which goes here to stop it from going back out again, I leave off. You want that as light as possible? <laughs> it's a bigger engine, so I'm gonna actually put them back in there. Uh, I'm not gonna leave them off, I don't want to. Because, <laughs> you know, this is a very heavy variator and sports ones be a lot lighter. Um, just in case there's something different there that may come off the back or something, and I don't want that happening. But it does go back and forth nicely. So uh, let's get all that together. Clean this, because look, still in there. Clean that up and have another look at that. Can't decide to take that off or not. So there you go. That is an awful, awful lot of dirt cleaned up from the variator. Look at the floor. So clutch plates are really, really good. Um, now, there's the blue line. I don't know if you can see it. And I've lined it up bang on. So that's all done. I'm going to wipe this down a little bit now because I didn't do that. Uh, clean up the rest of the dust. But there you go. We are cooking the gas. That back wheel spins lovely now. So I know that was maybe a bit of dirt in there and the dirt was causing the rest of this. So it's just a case now of reassembling everything that I took off before. Uh, cleaned it up a little bit. I'm put that back on. Um, yeah, it's all good. Chuck them away, Let's get that little clean, put it all back on, remember to put everything back as you did it. Now, if you're watching my video and you need to remember a little bit, then rewind and play again. Don't forget to plug this back in, that goes back here. Um, let me show you, there's a little plug there for that lead. Get to put these back on, give it a clean. Just It's just good maintenance to make sure everything's nice and clean and you know there's nothing dangling around. You can replace these if you wish, I'm not gonna. To be honest with you, the pad, I don't even have them on there. Um, it's not uh, an item that is going to let anything out, but I suppose because of the water and moisture getting in, they want to keep this dry. I'm impressed with that belt, though. I expect it to be a lot worse than that. Um, so that may be on my next service, I'll do that one. Right, let's get everything back on. It's raining out there, but I've got to give it a go. Can you imagine if I put them 27s in, I've got to pull them out, it goes, there. Yeah. Now, Monday morning, I will not be happy at all. At least I could put this away until I do get it. I'm impressed with that. Though. Really, really good. I thought that was a little bit of a whinge I was getting, but with all the dust going in there, that's what was probably doing it. Not very good at all. Even if the rollers didn't need changing, a cleanup is going to help this massively. And in theory now, I haven't got such good pull away. I'm going to get much better top end. As I said, I know it was uh, 70... Eight, yeah, eight and a half thousand. I wonder what it's going to be doing now. I didn't like running. Nine thousand on the red. And I know Pedge just give it some all the time, but when it's a bigger engine, you don't want to be running it on the red all the time. And it does do 70 happily. You will still, you know, shock a lot of car drivers when you're zooming by them. Because I like doing that. Let's see what this does now. Right, get it all back on. Okay, it's hammered down rain outside. Um, so I didn't video it on damage my camera. 
Um, I just pulled way up there and I pulled way back down there again and wow, that did go really, really well. I can really tell the difference between the service and having that clean rollers, definitely better. Now, tomorrow if it's not having any rain, I'll go for a longer ride. Because I don't want to go to work tomorrow and find I can do 44 mile an hour or something. But bigger rollers means top end, not bottom end. So I'm expecting, well, it pulled away really well. So I'm expecting good things. I'll update you another video, but this is the end of this one. There's my winter hack, one of three. And there is a service. And the rollers changed on the belt there. The rollers... And the variator system cleaned, rollers changed, belt didn't need it, clutch didn't come off because actually it's very good. So all round, think how much you've just saved if you've just copied what I've just done there. £30 for a service, the roller's £15, 45 quid. that would cost you a damn sight more. You could add on another £150, £200 for servicing with all their labour costs and so on. So, job done. Now for me back in Cape Verde. And you can watch some of the funny clips at the end that I didn't put in the video. I wanted to put this in the beginning, actually. <laughs> Maybe I'll do that now. So goodbye for me in lovely, sunny Cape Verde. Back to good old blighty and crap rainy weather. Take care of yourselves on the road. Please like, share and subscribe. That was a different start. Check out the funny bits at the end, will you? Some of the ones I didn't add in that didn't look right. People walking by. Lovely holiday. The only thing I can say is the bloody flies. I mean, honestly, it was my old man used to say, Sam Valtis dance, you're a landing. You're just doing this all the time. You know, you open your eyes and this fly's just doing this. It's like, fuck off. <laughs> I'm guessing it's the sodium, you know, salt, we sweat, whatever. But they just don't leave you alone. And that's really bloody annoying. And even on the flight home, they were in the aeroplane because they fly in with us a lot. And they're just doing the same thing. So, <laughs> although it's miserable and raining, there's no bloody flies landing on you. So that's a bonus there. <laughs> oh, paddling in my garden. What's today's video about? The second video is my winter hack. What did I choose? Well, you're going to find out. Press the top one. Yep. Yeah, close your can to you. Yeah, but I want to see if you're in it. Yeah, no, I'll be in it because it's quite broad. Mm -hmm. you just keep the basic bits to me. Drop the little one. Mm -hmm. So you bought your winter. Okay. Mark Savage here, the third instalment of the winter hack. Was there somebody there? Oh, that's really windy. Yeah, no. Which way's the wind on? Everywhere. Mm. I'll go and see what comes out. Mark Savage here, and welcome to my channel. This is the third instalment of the Winter Hack. So I'm not talking to myself, I'm doing a video. <laughs> Do YouTube. Don't worry if you do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking to a post. <laughs> The problem with doing a video on your own is that people look at you while you're a dick. <laughs> but yes, I'm still in Cape Verde. Can't get that. So I'm not nuts, I'm doing a video. <laughs> it's alright. Trying to find your room. No, no. What are you after? 279, so that's that way, so you've just lost one. I don't know, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> lost 
we're trying to fall in. Welcome to my channel. Was it long? I think maybe stop. Right, where is he? Well, oh! You haven't given me a chance. Fucking hell. I did it, hurry up. Are you ready now? No. I want to be able to get this one done. And the last bit. Where was that bit? Can't see anyway because the screen's gone off. 